Hi guys! Um, if you're new here, I'm Emily. I mainly blog, but I'm doing some stuff on YouTube now too. Um, my blog is wavyhaircare.com and today in this video I'm going to go over some of my favorite protein products. Um, a lot of people are scared of protein and the protein moisture balance can be really overwhelming when you're new, but my hair absolutely loves protein so I'm a little bit passionate about some of my favorite protein products and I thought I would share them with you guys. I personally tend to think about protein products in two main categories. I think about like true protein treatments and these are products that if my hair is over moisturized are going to help pull it in like the protein end of the spectrum in a more like direct way and then other the other category being just products that have protein and those are products that I see more as like about maintaining the protein moisture balance that I might hopefully already have. Um, and depending on your individual hair's needs, you might need protein treatments or you might need to just have protein in some of your everyday products. And um, that's kind of the part where a lot of people get confused. It's like, how do I figure that out? There's a lot of different theories on this, a lot of um, videos out there, but I have a um, blog post that talks about my like rules of thumb for how to estimate if your hair is likely to need a lot of protein or just a little bit of protein and so I'll link my blog post about that in the description box. I'm going to start off by talking about what I think of as actual protein treatments. These are the types of products that I turn to when I feel like I have too much moisture in my hair. Um, this is when my hair um, isn't curling up as well, when it feels really, really soft, when it's not holding definition, those types of things, that's when I turn to a, a protein treatment. Probably my favorite protein treatment is this two-step protein treatment by Afogi? Afogi? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this um, can be purchased at Sally Beauty stores or it's available on Amazon. Um, those are the only two places that I've ever found it. And um, it calls itself a two-step protein treatment because this is step one and then there's also like a moisturizing step. Um, and I don't buy that second bottle. That second bottle is not Curly Girl Method approved if that matters to you. Um, that's not really why I don't buy it. I don't buy it because when I'm using this, I desperately need protein in my routine and so I don't want to follow up the protein treatment with a moisturizing treatment because if I then use a moisture uh, treatment after this, it's going to not pull my hair as far into the protein end of the spectrum as I'm hoping for. Um, but this is a really powerful protein treatment. Um, it actually like says in the instructions that this is intended to be used by a professional. It's not really intended for um, ordinary people who aren't professionals to use at home. Um, so there is a little bit of you know risk involved with that, but um, it's the best uh, most effective thing I've found and I'm pretty comfortable with using it because I know that if I were to experience protein overload, which today I personally haven't, my hair seems to love all the protein, um, then I could follow this up with a moisturizing treatment to, um, you know, help reset that balance. And a lot of times clarifying can help with protein overload too, because a lot of times protein overload is essentially like protein buildup. And so clarifying can just get some of that excess off. This is somewhat of a unique product in that you apply it to your hair and then you need to let your hair dry with this in it. And uh, the instructions recommend using it and then sitting under a bonnet dryer. But again, that's kind of with the intention that this is usually going to be used in a salon by a hair professional. Most of us don't have bonnet dryers at home, of course. And so it does say in the instructions that if you don't have a bonnet dryer, you can use a blow dryer, but you want to make sure that your hair is not being agitated as um, it's drying. So you want to make sure that when you're using your blow dryer or your diffuser that your hair is not blowing around from the force of your blow dryer. Um, so I uh, use my diffuser, but I hover diffuse and I use it on low speed um, just to make sure that my hair isn't like being moved around as this is drying on my hair. And it will dry kind of like um, a lot you might experience with a gel. Your hair will get like a hard feeling to it um, and then you rinse it off and um, that's how this works. Uh, it's a little bit pricier. I think this might be one of the more expensive 
hair products that I purchased. Um, I think it's like close to $30. Um, but this bottle is really big. Um, I've had it forever. So um, you do get a lot of use out of it. And um, if you're curious about trying it and don't want to commit to a full bottle, Amazon, I think um, Sally Beauty as well, also have like little trial packets you can get for maybe like $5. Um, you can get probably a couple uses out of those um, that can, you know, let you know if this is worth it. That's what I did. I bought the packets first and then realized like I really like this stuff. So then I committed to the full size bottle. Because the two-step protein treatment is a really intense protein treatment, I would recommend only using that if you really feel very confident that your hair is in moisture overload. Um, if you aren't sure if your hair even needs protein or if it like badly needs protein or not, I wouldn't go with that. I would go with something um, that's like a little gentler. A second protein treatment product that I really like is the Curlsmith Bond Curl Rehab Cell. And um, with any of the bond rebuilding products like this or Olaplex number three, um, K18, uh, people like to point out that they're not protein treatments. And um, I, I agree with that. There's a difference between uh, rebuilding your bonds versus giving your hair like a shot of protein. But this one in particular isn't just a bond uh, strengthener, bond rebuilder. Um, it also has a good bit of protein in it. And my hair isn't particularly damaged. Um, I don't dye my hair. I don't use like curling irons or flat irons. I diffuse my hair. So a little bit of heat damage there maybe and you know normal like environmental sun damage things like that but um, for the most part I would say my hair isn't damaged. Um, but I feel a significant improvement when using this at least if I use it when it needs it. Um, like my hair will physically feel stronger. It will curl up better, like visibly curl up better. Um, if my hair is like skewing towards over moisturized and, um, kind of what I like about this is that you only have to leave it in your hair for like 15 to 30 minutes. It kind of gives you a rule of thumb to go off based on, um, if your hair is low, medium or high porosity. Um, but, um, yeah, this, my hair takes forever to dry. So, this one is what I do if I like really need a protein treatment and I have the time to diffuse my hair and then rewash it. Um, if I don't have as much time, I go for this just because um, it's it's faster, you know? Um, and this is, I think, 28 or $29. Um, but uh, if you're cheap like me, wait and watch Ulta. They do Curlsmith deals like a few times a year where they will put a lot of items 50% off. Um, so I get it for like 14 or $15 and um, that's kind of what I do with the Curlsmith stuff because I do think some of their stuff is good, but um, it is pricey. So um, that's how I save money on it. Those are the two products that I see as like true protein treatments that I really reach for. Um, there's a third that I don't have with me anymore. Um, I used it up and I haven't repurchased it, but it's called um, Neutral Protein Filler. And this can be purchased at Sally Beauty as well. And it's basically um, this little bottle of like pure protein drops. And it's kind of this in-between product that you could use it as a protein treatment because you get to control how much of this product you put um, in your conditioner, in your like mask or um, whatever you wanna use it in. And so if you put a couple of drops, it's just a tiny bit of protein. If you put in more, it could be more of like a true protein treatment. Um, it is a little bit of a risky product because it is basically just pure protein and you get to control how much you put in. So you could certainly give yourself protein overload with that, but it's something that I used when I was first experimenting with protein, mainly because it's like $4 or something. And then I didn't have to buy like a protein specific product. I could just use my regular conditioner, my regular um, deep conditioner, and just add that to it when I needed more protein. And so that's a really like budget friendly way to do that. Um, yeah, and you can um, experiment with it. I would recommend starting really slow, just add like a drop or two. And then um, if you don't see enough improvement, maybe the next time add, you know, more than a few drops. But um, so I do think that one's worth um, really being cautious with, but it's really affordable and it's nice to have the flexibility of adding it to products you already have. I almost feel like this next product that I'm going to mention seems kind of controversial to list in a protein video, but um, I am including products that have protein, not necessarily everything that is super protein heavy or that is a protein treatment. Um, the Shea Moisture 
Manuka Honey and Yogurt Hydrate and Repair Protein Power Treatment. Um, and the reason that I like joke about this being a little controversial is because this is a pretty popular product in wavy and curly hair groups, but it seems like it's often suggested as a protein treatment and then there's like inevitably somebody who like, hey, that's not actually a protein treatment, that's actually like a balanced uh, between moisture and protein product. Um, and I think like the reason that's so confusing is because the, the name itself, it calls itself uh, repair protein power treatment. So that sounds like this is just going to be jam-packed with protein and like really help you get out of moisture overload, right? But uh, the first protein containing ingredient on the list is pretty far down. It does have multiple protein ingredients in it, but um, they're all lower on the list and there's like that rule of thumb that the first five ingredients that are listed on the label make up about 80% of the product. And so um, if there's moisturizing ingredients in those first five ingredients and there's not protein, then um, it's not going to be a, a true protein treatment, right? My hairstylist actually, uh, just kind of on her own, brought that up to me that um, a lot of people, she feels, are confused about the difference between an, a product that has protein versus one that is like a true protein product that is going to actually help with their protein moisture balance because the vast majority of products that are on the market that say they're strengthening or repairing um, or even just outright say that they contain protein are not protein treatments. She said that most products that have protein are balanced between protein and moisture. Um, and so that just confuses people and I, I think it's like understandable why like marketing can be confusing. But anyway, my point is this is not a protein treatment but it does have protein and um, I do really like this. Um, I feel like my hair just like physically feels better after using it. It's um, an oddly thick product. Um, I feel like I really have to add water to it in my hand before I can add it to my hair or like it just doesn't even like spread very well. Um, but uh, this is something I like using if I feel like my hair is balanced but it's just been a while since I've like you know given it that like extra TLC. Um, so if you are in a good spot with your protein moisture balance, but you know that your hair likes protein, this is just a good way of giving it more of everything. Um, and it's like 10 or 12 bucks um, available almost everywhere. Um, this used to be Curly Girl Method approved. I think I did read somewhere that they added a wax to it now, so it's not um, Curly Girl Method friendly anymore, but I personally don't notice any additional buildup when using this versus using Curly Girl products, so I use it anyway, but I guess that kind of comes back to whether or not you really like believe in the curly girl method. So um, I'll leave that alone, I guess. But um, yeah, moving on to some other protein containing products. For shampoo and conditioner, I like mine to include some protein just because my hair really does love protein. And so I feel like if I keep it in kind of my everyday regular products that uh, can make a, some small difference in uh, how frequently I need to do protein treatments. Um, and at the same time, I don't like to spend a lot of money on shampoo and conditioner. I feel like a lot of shampoos and conditioners can work for my hair type. It's not something that I feel I need to uh, invest extra money in to get better results. Um, for shampoo, it's basically like making sure it's cleaning my hair well enough and not stripping it with conditioner. It's like, does it have enough slip? Do I not hate the smell? Is it not too heavy? Um, and a lot of shampoos and conditioners can work for me. But um, the Not Your Mother's rice water and Himalayan Moringa Superior Strength Shampoo and Conditioner have kind of been my go-to since these were released. Um, I've just kind of always had good luck with the Not Your Mother's line. Um, they're readily available, they're cheap, and I feel like they work well for what they do or for what they cost. Um, but most of the Not Your Mother's Naturals products are protein free. And so I used to use the Curl Talk line of shampoo and conditioner, and those were okay. The conditioner didn't quite have enough slip. So if you've tried that, um, I will say that this line of conditioner, I think, has a little bit more slip than the Curl Talk conditioner had. And so these are just like a perfect match for me. Um, I got these at Ulta. I think Ulta is discontinuing these, um, like, pouch type things, but... Um, Target and some other stores have this product still, but they're just in bottles, but same thing. Um, so yeah, this is kind of my go-to shampoo and conditioner. Kind of related to that shampoo and conditioner, um, I also did try this. They call it a protein rinse product that is from that same line. Um, I do enjoy using this sometimes. I don't really feel like I feel a significant 
change in my hair when I use it the way that I do with the um, two-step protein treatment or the Curl Smith or the Shea Moisture. So it's probably not one of my absolute top favorites, but it is super affordable um, and I do like it. Um, I think it might have less protein than some other products. Um, I think it's like seven or eight down on the list, but I like how it's really easy to get it in at your scalp because of this nozzle. Um, and I think I would probably recommend this to somebody who is maybe like a little scared of protein but wants to try adding some into your routine because um, it is really easy to use. It's affordable. It's, you know, seems to be fairly gentle amount of protein in my experience. So um, I thought I'd throw that in there too. The last products I'm going to talk about are leave-ins. And I have read that if you are looking to add protein into your routine in a somewhat sustained way but not wanting to go to like a full protein treatment, that using a leave-in with protein can be more effective just because it stays on your hair and so it's more likely to absorb more long-term than something like a shampoo or conditioner which has you know very little time to um, have an opportunity to sink into your hair. I'm not sure if that's like a really sciencey thing or not. This is like just things I've heard you know kind of uh, ordinary everyday people say in curly hair groups but kind of seems logical to me but um, so with that in mind, you can add protein to your routine through like gels or some mousses. It seems hard to find mousses that have protein, but quite a few gels have protein or leave-ins. And so I thought I would share a couple of gels that I like that have protein. One of them is just LA Looks Gel. I think all of the LA Looks Gels have some protein in them. Um, I will always <laughs> love LA Looks because it's it's cheap. It works, you get this massive bottle, and um, the fact that it has protein is a bonus for, at least for my hair type, where um, my hair loves protein. Another gel that I really like that has protein is the Girls With Curls Jelly. Um, this one's a little hard to find. It's available on Amazon, and in my area, I find it at TJ Maxx. If you have a Marshalls, I think TJ Maxx and Marshalls often carry the same products, and they're like the same company or something, but, um, yeah, this has protein too. Um, I, I enjoy how this gel works. And so that's another way that I, you know, work it into my kind of regular routine sometimes. Um, if you're somebody who uh, likes using like leave-in conditioners or creams, that's another way that you can get protein into your routine. I uh, feel like my hair really just doesn't tangle much. It stays really well moisturized. So I usually don't use a leave-in conditioner or a cream. I usually just use shampoo and conditioner and then a gel or a mousse. Um, and my hair is good to go. But um, I have found one like protein containing cream that is light enough for wavy hair, or at least my hair, and um, that has protein. And it is the Curlsmith Feather Light Protein Cream. And despite calling itself a protein cream, uh, the protein is kind of far down on the list. It is one, two, three, four, six. Rice protein is the sixth ingredient, so it's not in that type five. Um, so I don't think it's super heavy on protein, but it has protein. Um, and for me, having fine hair and wavy, like loosely wavy hair, the big thing with creams and leave-in conditioners is, is it gonna leave my hair greasy? Is it gonna weigh my hair down? Um, and this doesn't do either of those, and it has some protein. So this is something that I can use sometimes to add protein into my routine. And again, Curl Smith products are not cheap, and I usually do prefer to recommend like cheaper products, but this is just the only leave-in conditioner or cream that I've tried that I know has protein that works well for my hair type. Um, and again, if you're like a frugal person, uh, look for those sales at Ulta. They do the wonderful hair event twice a year and then Black Friday and Cyber Monday um, they almost always include Curl Smith at some point like at least twice a year 50% off and so this would go from like $28 down to like 14 and it's a good size bottle so I feel like it's worth the $14 for as much as you get but um, yeah so those are some of my favorite protein containing products if you have protein containing or even protein treatment products that you really love and that work really well for your wavy hair, I'd love for you to leave me a comment. Let me know what works well for you and maybe I'll pick them up and uh, give them a try myself.